Hello, Pastor John. Uh, my name is Aaron, and I'm a junior at UCLA. Um, Hi, throughout the centuries, um, Orthodox Christians have upheld God's immutability, uh, meaning that he doesn't undergo any change, um, and also his simplicity, uh, meaning that he is not composed of any parts, but is of one pure, self-existent being. Um, at the same time, though, we also know that the word, um, Jesus, became flesh. So my question is, how do we understand the incarnation of Christ without compromising on God's immutability or simplicity? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. When we talk about God's self-existence, theologians call that the aseity of God. God cannot change because God is eternally who He is. God is not becoming. Everyone that God creates is becoming. That, that means we're in some life process moving from one thing to another. There is a kind of theology that has floated around, particularly over the last 20 years, that wants to say that God is in the process of becoming, and um, it, it wants to say that God uh, doesn't know everything until it happens. He doesn't know anything unless He can see it happen. God is subject to added information and subject to experiences of gaining knowledge. And the reason they come up with that idea is they think that disassociates God from all that's bad in the universe. If God d doesn't even know about it, then He can't be blamed for it. The truth of the matter is God is not becoming, God is, and God is who He is. I am that I am. That's why the, the first person singular verb to be is the name of God, I am. He is not becoming anything that He is not already. He is eternally the I am. So we don't know, we don't experience life like that. Life for us is all a process. You saw little babies up here, you see people at all ages here. We're all in the process of becoming. That is not true of God. Now, does that mean that God cannot appear in some form? God could appear in a flame of fire in the Old Testament. God could appear in a whirlwind in the Old Testament. God could appear as, as an angel, as the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. And God, who is God, the I Am, can appear in human flesh and did that in the person of Jesus Christ. That did not advance or alter or change His nature in any way. That's why Hebrews 1 says that God spoke in His Son who is the exact representation of His nature in human form. That was very important for us for two reasons. Reason one, so that He as man could die for man, and two, so that He as man could live a righteous life that we could see. It's one thing to try to understand the attributes of God in the invisible reality of God. It's, it's quite more clear to understand the attributes of God in the visible life of Jesus Christ. There we see what love and kindness and mercy and tenderness and righteousness and all look like. So. Nothing in the nature of God is altered, nothing is changed, nothing is subtracted, nothing is amended, nothing is moved uh, to another place. God is eternally I am. He is not becoming, but He can and did manifest Himself in certain ways and in the ultimate way in order to be the substitute for us and to demonstrate what God looks like in a, in a form that we can comprehend, He came in the flesh in the form of Jesus Christ. Now, that had nothing to do with any altering of His nature. That's why even as Jesus, He said, um, you don't need to tell me what's in a man, I know what's in a man. I can read their minds. That's why He said, I can, I can call legions of angels if I, I want. All the, all the deity of God, in Him the fullness of deity dwells, says the Apostle Paul. So there's no altering of His nature, okay? okay thank you. Good question.